Welcome to a lesson on Euler paths and Euler circuits. An Euler path is a path that uses every edge in a graph with no repeats. Being a path, it does not have to return to the starting vertex. So looking at this first graph here, there's more than one way to form a Euler path. For example, if we start at vertex C, we could go from C to B, from B to A, from A to C, and C to D. This is an Euler path because we used every edge exactly one time with no repeats. To show the path, we can use arrows like we did here, or sometimes you'll see the edges numbered. For example, here we'd have one, two, three, and four. Just don't confuse this numbering with the weight of the edges. Looking at our second example here, if we start at vertex A, we could go from A to B, B to C, C to A, A to D, and D to C. So again, we started A, ended at C, used all the edges exactly once. Or again, if we number these, we'd have one, two, three, four, and five. Now an Euler circuit is a circuit that uses every edge in a graph with no repeats. Being a circuit, that means it must start and end at the same vertex. So an Euler path does not have to start and end at the same vertex, but an Euler circuit does. So for example, if we start at, let's say, vertex B, we could go from B to A, a to E, back to B, to C, to D, to E, and back to B. Notice how we began at B, ended at B, and used each edge exactly once. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. But not all graphs have Euler paths and Euler circuits. Which leads us to Euler's path and circuit theorems. A graph will contain an Euler path if it contains, at most, two vertices of odd degree. A graph will contain an Euler circuit if all vertices have even degree. Notice how these theorems do not tell us how to find the Euler path or circuit. It just tells us if one exists. And just to review, remember the degree or valence of a vertex is the number of edges meeting at that vertex. Let's take a look at some more examples. We want to determine if each graph has an Euler path, and if it has one, we want to find an Euler path. So again, remember, we're first going to check to see if there are at most two vertices of odd degree. So looking at our first graph here, notice how vertex B has degree two, so does vertex A, E, and D, but vertex C and F have degree three. Notice how it does satisfy the requirement to have an Euler path. It has two vertices of odd degree, which is okay. So we can say the graph does have an Euler path, and now let's find one. So we want to start at a vertex, and form a path that uses every edge exactly once. Let's say we try a beginning at vertex B. We could go from vertex B to vertex A, vertex A to vertex F, then vertex F to vertex E, E to D, D to C, and now we have a problem. If we go from C to F, we'll have to backtrack or use an edge more than once to get back to B. If we go to B now, we haven't used edge CF. So our current path is not going to give us an Euler path. So let's go ahead and try again. Remember the theorem tells us if we have a path, it doesn't tell us how to find it. So now let's begin at vertex C. Let's try going to D, and then E, and then F. Let's go back up to C. And then from C to B, B 
to A and A to F. I think we found it. We started at C and ended at F and used each edge exactly one time. So again we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we were done. So we can say the Euler path would be C, D, E, F, back to C, B, A, F. Now let's take a look at our second example. We'll begin by determining the degree of each vertex. So here we have degree three, here we have degree three, here we have degree three. Actually, we're done now because remember, we can have at most two vertices of odd degree. So we can stop here and say the graph does not have an Euler path. Now let's revisit Euler circuits. A graph will contain an Euler circuit if all vertices have even degree. We want to determine if each graph has an Euler circuit, and if it has one, we want to find an Euler circuit. We'll begin by determining the degree of each vertex. So we have degree two, degree two, degree four, degree four, degree two, and degree two. All the vertices have even degree, therefore this graph does have an Euler circuit. So now we'll find another circuit. So we'll begin at one vertex, form a path using all edges exactly one time, returning to the starting vertex. So if we start at vertex C, let's go to vertex B, to A, to F, back to C, to D, to E, to F, and back to C. So we started at C, went to B, to A, to F, to C, to D, to E, to F, and back to C. So our Euler circuit, so the Euler circuit Again, is C, B, A, F, C, D, E, F, and back to C. And you may have noticed this Euler circuit is not unique. Looking at our second graph, we can quickly see that vertex B has degree two, but vertex C has degree three, as soon as we know a vertex has an odd degree, we can stop. The graph will not have an Euler circuit. Now you might be asking, why do we care if an Euler circuit exists? Think back to our police officer on patrol from a previous example. The police officer wanted to patrol a neighborhood on foot by walking as little as possible. The ideal situation would be a circuit that covers every street with no repeats, and that's an Euler circuit. Luckily, Euler solved the question of whether or not an Euler path or circuit will exist. So looking at our graph here, notice how vertices A, F, C, and D all have degree two. Vertices B and E have degree four. Because all the vertices have an even degree, we can easily determine this graph does have an Euler circuit which we actually found by trial and error in a previous lesson. One possibility would be to start at E, to D, to C, to B, back to E, to F, to A, to B, and finally back to E. Again, the other circuit was to follow this path. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I hope you found this helpful.